unpack. We unpack. We unpack. Coming to your live box and ego unpack. Yeah. We unpack. We unpack. We unpack. Oh, it ain't over, and it's looking bad. Paulie Malignaggi does an interview with Pro Box TV. I want to go over what he said regarding Terrence Crawford, and he basically said what your boy Ego has been telling you on the channel, and I find that mighty funny. <laughs> so, without further ado, do let's go over what was stated on pro box tv so paulie malignaggi let me get through the quote he says terrence crawford is only looking for a big money fight based on popularity and legacy he realized these top 154 pound guys are no joke he had to dig deep to pull out a win over israel madrimov and the 154 pound division is full of guys like Madrimov. He's thinking, hey, at this stage, I didn't build my reputation to fight these young, hungry destroyers who are salivating in hunger. You can't blame Terrence Crawford, although I'm not sure that the Canelo fight will happen or if Turkey is interested in it. It doesn't interest me. I like competitive fights. It allows Crawford to pad his bank account. It doesn't do anything for me. I enjoy hungry fighters fighting to be the best. And this is, of course, Crawford after Madrimov. Now, I'm going to cook you. So when Pauli Malignaggi says nearly verbatim what Boxing Ego has told you, I don't see or hear the incessant name calling. When I say these things, people say, oh, you hate Terrence Crawford. No, I'm just a man with an opinion. You can choose to accept that opinion or you could disagree. I don't care either way. But I said what I said and I stand on what I said. The Canelo Crawford fight makes, do you hear me? Absolutely no sense. The only person it makes sense for is Terrence Crawford because Obviously, he's the one that selected it. He's the one that's calling for the fight. So there has to be some motive. So what this means to me, what I truly believe, I believe that Terrence Crawford is, I don't want to say disenchanted with boxing because I don't know personally what he's in his mind and what he's going through, but almost like kind of jaded and he's trying to get out the game. So he wants one last heist and he's going to give it his all. I don't doubt that Crawford would try to beat Canelo. I think he's a true warrior. He's a true fighter. He got skills. So he wants to shoot at the top. And here's the problem with that. So does everybody else. Everybody in boxing wants a shot at the highest paid, highest attraction, biggest fight that's going to net them the most money. I mean, if this is your profession, look at you. Let's say you're a plumber. Wouldn't you rather be a plumber for the White House or something like that? And then they put you on contract and they're making you're making more money. Or would you rather clean poop out of toilets, you know, for your regular rate? Of course, anybody's going to want to be put on retainer for a big, a big job or assignment. Or if you're a lawyer, you want to be a part of the biggest case in the nation you know the um anthony peterson and lacey peterson you want to be involved in you're a lawyer so of course you want to be involved where the action is so the thing is i think that's kind of common sense but the thing is terence crawford has made the decisions i've already said this bad business but bud has made the career choices that he's made and i truly think possibly He's not satisfied with how certain things have played out. So in a in an effort to almost convince the public, 
he has to convince you that Ricky Burns is this sensational win and you know he made the right moves because you have to live and ride with the moves that you made the Errol Spence win was cool it was in fact the best win I in my honest opinion think he should have tried to stay with Al Heyman continue to do business with Al Heyman because 154 to me appears to be Crawford's limit like that looks like your ceiling you went tooth and nail with the guy with 11 fights in Israel Madrimov and you know the thing that Paulie is saying that I can't really respect is he's saying you realize the fights at 154 are no joke which is true then he says you can't blame Crawford you can't blame you can't but I can because it doesn't work like that you can't perpetually make choices certain choices and then try to make up all the ground that you've you've missed over the years in a small period of time and that's what they tried to do with Crawford Turkey he injected a lot of money into Crawford's event and it flopped you guys could get mad at me but for all intents and purposes it appears to be a flop right you had to get any time if you had you pulled out all the stops you booked Eminem you had given Crawford a loaded undercard and you had to give out tickets and you still couldn't fill the venue to max capacity there were still 4,000 tickets roughly that were exempt and that's with giveaways and I'm sure a lot of pencil whipping and a lot of um basically giving tickets away pro bono right so you did all that to make it appear lit but behind the scenes they truly know what the real numbers are there's people who are quoting this 8.5 but they, they're like oh it did an 8.5 8.4 million dollar gate again you need to read you must read the literature there's a lot of people who act like they're in the know but they don't know they don't know ish about boxing the 8.4 doesn't account for giving away free tickets that they've done to paper the event. I've already went over it. You guys check those videos out. So here's the reality, mate. This doesn't put Crawford in any type of driver's seat having this type of event where everybody in the industry knows it was capped and they know that it didn't really, it didn't do what it was intended to make Crawford a star or whatever. So you're not, it's not going to give you leverage. You can lie on the paper and say it did an $8.4 million gate, but people in the industry that have been doing this, they can, you can assess, even me, you know, I can assess an event. I am a content creator. I create, I curate content. That's what some of you guys don't understand. It is my job, my duty to make content. So trust me, with all of my platforms from YouTube to Twitter to Instagram, etc., Facebook like page, all of my platforms are popping, right? Where we're doing numbers, millions of views on each platform that I am on. So you can't pull the rug beneath my feet. You can't pull the wool over my eyes because men lie, women lie, and numbers don't. I see the numbers. I, I, being a content creator, get paid off of this. So the more popping an event is, trust me, I'll be the second to know. The, the organizers, they'll be the first to know how the event do. Your boy Ego will be the second person to know because this is how I get paid and I'll see an influx and I'll see my check grow. Like, for example, when Gervonta Davis fights, I make more money. Point blank, period. When Canelo Alvarez fights, I make more money. Prime Wilder fought, I made a lot of money. Errol Spence fought, I make a lot of money. And so on and so forth. Reason being, these guys have brands and there was an anticipation. So how much money do you think I made when it was Wilder Fury, right? That was a good trilogy, great trilogy. Heavyweight, 
somebody getting knocked out type of deal. Tank versus uh, Leo Santa Cruz. These fights like that. Tank versus Frank Martin. It's always an influx. You, you're not going to prove to a content creator who's all about nut, the numbers. You can't trick me. When Crawford just fought Madrimov, despite having a loaded card, a venue that was too big for the event, etc., there was no real big trap. And then part of that is like, you gotta look at it like Crawford, he's not going out of his way to like promote. Madrimov is a classy dude. So then you, you also have that. So in terms of the promotion, it was real blah, meh. Like there was nothing explosive about it. It was just like, okay, you either wanted to see the fight or you didn't want to see the fight kind of deal. But there was no like pushing, shoving, yelling, arguing. There was no tension. It was just there. There was no like crazy interviews, nothing. There no shoulder program that really stood out. And that's what it is. So again, the reason why these numbers are important is because had it been a real success, I think at best, maybe that pushes you closer. Even though you wouldn't be the A-side over Canelo, maybe it pushes you closer to getting something done or luring him in. You have to keep in mind during the Crawford Madrimov fight, Turkey said, he says, accept this offer. They talking to Canelo, <laughs> like Canelo the B-side, accept this offer for Crawford. You should do it if you know what's best for you kind of attitude. What, what are we talking about? Like Canelo can't fight Berlanga and draw more of a crowd than Crawford. It's like, what are we talking about? And now you got Paulie Malignaggi and he's saying that, oh, he sees how real, basically I'm just giving you the, the short and skinny. He sees how real 154 is. And now, you know, he's, he just wants to cash out. Basically he wants to cash out, which is what I believe. He wants to, he feels he's done enough and he wants only the big opportunities and the big looks and a big fight with Canelo. He doesn't, he wants the little boy guys like Jerron Ennis According to Turkey, he says, we will send him an offer to fight Virgil Ortiz. I do not think, in my opinion, he will take it. So why are you stuck on one guy? Just retire. If that's what it is, that's what I think he should do. Because you hold no cards versus Canelo. After you went tooth and nail, and some people are even saying you lost to Madrimov, the Crawford fight is just a pipe dream. Who even wants to see that? Bro, you've done one fight at 54 and you looked human. You have no fights at 160. You have no fights at 68. You're not the A side. They put a bunch of money into you and it's still flop. Canelo, in my opinion, knocks out Berlanga. I think he's going to, or at best he wins, but I definitely think he's going to hurt Berlanga, in my opinion. So his star power will continue to grow. And then you're still holding out hope for Canelo and you've already gotten your answer. So it's just like, you're almost like stalling out the division. You don't want to fight the other great names like Jamel Charlo, this guy or that guy. And then like, okay, some of the PBC fighters, maybe PBC has their own plans. Why not Boots? Why not Virgil Ortiz? You know, you know Madrimov rematch. Those are on your side and Let's be real. The part about this, this is super fake for the Bud Buddies is this. The names that are aligned with your side from a fight perspective are better than majority of the people you spent fighting on top rank. So don't include the Errol Spence fight because he wasn't with top rank then, right? So Virgil Ortiz, I, I think that he should run it back with Bochuk personally, but I don't doubt that Crawford versus Virgil Ortiz would still be better than virtually all the fights that he did on top rank when he did him. So you were willing to fight Mean Machine, but not the guy that beat Mean Machine in Virgil Ortiz. And we know that would at least be bigger than the likes of David Avocado. So I think the jig is up. People see it. Crawford's not the biggest star. And on top of not being the biggest star, his ideas of who he should get and how it should play out. They just don't really align with his numbers. It's what it is. Don't really align with his numbers. He almost feels too good to 
why should I fight Boots, man? Like, I'm I'm Terrence Crawford. I got two ESPYs. But this is a fight that the fans are asking for and willing to pay for it. But you're denying the fans of fights that they're saying they want to see. What part of the game is that? So if the fans want it and the fans are willing to pay, but then you feel it's beneath you, and then you're only calling for a fight that's above you in Canelo that you have no you have no bait you have no hook and lure to lure Canelo in then it just becomes this cycle that's why I said you might as well retire if that's the case if your expectations are unrealistic it's like let's say let's say boxer ego wasn't the best in the business and it's not even close and I wanted to get a traditional nine to five job and I have been doing YouTube for over a decade. So I don't have traditional work at this point in terms of, I, I can only say I've been a YouTuber for the last 10 plus years, right? So I don't have an actual regular job on my resume, right? So you would have to humble yourself. If you needed a job, you have to humble yourself and you would have to accept a realistic rate to get employed, right? Especially if you have gaps in employment or your resume is soft, right? You want this job, I get it, but you can't be like, oh, I'll only, I'll only settle for store manager. Do you have store manager experience? No. Okay, then we're not filling that position with you. You see how this works? This is just business. You want to be the CEO of the company because you like the pay scale, but you have nothing on your resume or no type of leverage. You don't you don't have nepotism. You don't have any in to get that CEO spot. So you, basically, you're not going to get the CEO spot. So you have to at least settle for maybe something less and then build your name up and then work your way up to the higher rankings and the higher position. That's how it always goes. You know, I couldn't not have any employment and then try to get a job and then be unrealistic and say, nah, I want $48 an hour. And they're like, we're not paying you that in California. We're not paying you 48 an hour. That's kind of what it is with Crawford. So he wants to play a game that ultimately he can't win. They injected a lot of money in you. The fight still flopped. You have no say over what Canelo does. Canelo's working with people that you choose not to work with in terms of PBC. And then from the sounds of it, you would turn down Boots or you would turn down Virgil Ortiz. According to Turkey, you know, the Boots fight is not a top fight that we're looking for. He literally said in the spaces, it's a great fight, but it's not a top fight we're looking for. What does that even mean? How does that even make sense? Crawford versus Boots, Jerron Ennis is a great fight, but it's not a top fight that we're looking to make. That's like McDonald's saying, everybody would love this bacon Big Mac, but we're not gonna make it. What part of business is this? You guys let me know in the comment section. I'm gonna ask you about a fight that I really like. Terence Crawford versus Boots Ennis. Do you like it? Great fight, but not, not the top fight we want to, to see it. Okay. Okay. What would you what would your top next fights be for Crawford away from Canelo? I don't think Crawford will fight anyone except Canelo. Okay. This is my wow. opinion. Yeah. This is my opinion yes. and this is what I feel. Uh but it is it is about him. Uh we give him a, a offer for Ortiz. Uh, and I, I don't know if he will take it or not, but uh, we, uh, we have an agreement to do big fight for Ortiz if Crawford doesn't uh, take the fight. Okay, so we could see Crawford against Virgil Ortiz next if he takes the fight. But I, th I, I don't think he will take it. I, th okay. I think he only want Canelo. Yeah. You you understand that? Or, or, or you I, would... I, I, I understand that. Uh, 
uh, I respect all the fighters. See, yeah. sometimes the the people doesn't understand my character. I am in the camp of the fighters, all the fighters. Mm. If they respect their contract and doing great fight and uh, handle us right and we handle them right, I am in the camp of the fighters, all the ca- yeah. all the fighters. I am behind the fighters. I remember speaking to you in Saudi Arabia and you told me that growing up you were a huge fan of boxing 